Wonderful. Then that sounds like a great time to get started. Um, so I will just kick us off very quickly. Um, my name is Michael Harold, and uh, I, in my day to day, am the communications director at SDOT, but I'm serving today as the facilitator for the first meeting. It's an exciting day, the very first meeting of the West Seattle Bridge Community Task Force. Just also acknowledging some additional SDOT colleagues who are on the call um, as we're getting to know names and faces. We have, of course, Sam Zimbabwe, SDOT's director. Uh, we'll also be joined in hearing from Matt Donahue, SDOT's Interim Director of Roadway Structures Division, uh, also known as our Bridge Whisperer. We have Heather Marks, who's our Director of Downtown Mobility and leading SDOT's West Seattle Bridge Response Team. Uh, Megan Shepard, who is our Deputy Director of Downtown Mobility and leading much of our interagency coordination. Um, Bill Ward and Diane Wetter, who are also on and are serving as the primary staff contacts for all of the task force members for the uh, task force work. Um, and uh, uh, an additional ha handful of, of SDOC uh, members. And so thank you all for being here today. And you'll get a chance to meet and interact with a handful of them going forward. Very quickly, before turning things over to uh, Sam, to get us started, I just wanted to lay out a few ground rules for everyone um, so that we know uh, to the best of our ability how to use these digital platforms. Um, first of all, acknowledging that this every day in a digital universe is a learning opportunity for all of us. Um, so we'll work through this and we will get better. Um, but for our, our task force members, we ask that everyone please keep their lines muted to the extent possible. Um, as you have questions, please use the hand icon to raise your hand or even preferably use the chat box. And when you're using the chat box, make sure you're chatting to all participants or panelists, rather, chatting to all panelists so that we can see your questions or comments. And I also just want to acknowledge that this is a very full schedule today. Um, it's a bit of a fire hose, but there's a lot of information. We thank you for that. Uh, but that also means that there's not a lot of time for dialogue and questions. But that's why we have our next task force meeting already on the calendar for, for next week and why Bill and Diane uh, remain a constant resource to everyone on this call uh, as you need additional information between formal meetings. Um, and then just finally to any of the public audience that is joining us, just acknowledging that this is a task force meeting um, but we've invited the public to to um, listen in on the conversation uh, so that they are also part of this learning process. And so with that, I will turn it over to Sam to kick us off for the very first West Seattle Bridge Community Task Force meeting. Sam. Thank you so much, Michael, uh, and thanks everybody for joining us. I'm actually going to let Deputy Mayor Shafali Ranganathan uh, kick us off initially and then uh, take over from there. But I am just so excited that we have uh, this task force in place and that we are going to uh, be able to utilize all of your skills, experience, uh, understanding, and thoughtful ideas. Um, so let me turn it over to Shafali and then I'll come back to say a little bit more as we move through the agenda. I think Shafali was on, but I've not. Thank you, Sam, uh, and oh, thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, here. Uh, I just want to. Oh, can you hear me? Can now. Can folks yes. hear me? She probably disappear. We might have lost her. Um, well, I can take over. As as Michael said, we are all uh, getting used to these these uh, digital platforms, and um, it is it. There's there's always a little bit of technical dif difficulty. I look forward to the day when we can all be in the same place uh, working together on these issues. Uh, but it is likely that for for much of this process, we will be meeting in this virtual space and we'll look to do that as, as best as we can. Um, 
this is the top issue uh, right now for SDOT and the mayor has made it very clear for all of us uh, just how important of a priority it is for her as well. Um, this is a, a huge undertaking and it's a very complex set of issues, both the technical challenges of the bridge and the community impacts of uh, uh, our transportation challenges right now while the bridge is closed. Um, we are devoting substantial resources within SDOT, uh, organizing our team and working with at, at a very rapid uh, state to both understand what uh, what is going on with the bridge itself and then positioning ourselves to make the best possible decisions uh, in restoring the, the critical transportation connection um, that is the, the West Seattle Bridge. Um, we are looking to the community task force to give us uh, insights, thoughts, opinions, channel some community thoughts, um, be able to be a sounding board and a thought partner uh, as we move forward with what is going to be a lot of complex uh, challenging issues um, over the course of the next couple of years uh, as we work to restore uh, the, this transportation connection. Um, folks know, uh, may, m most folks may know that I uh, live in, in West Seattle. I have lived there for the last year or so. Uh, so I know that that is just a drop in the bucket of the experience that many of you have uh, within the community uh, and, and the communities on both sides of the Duwamish. Uh, it's really critical for us that we get your thoughts and insights uh, as we move through this process. And we are here to facilitate, um, move, move the process forward, provide technical information, um, and don't ever hesitate to reach out to Bill, Diane, uh, myself or Heather, as we uh, as we work together on on solving these challenging problems. So I'll turn it back over to Michael uh, as we move through I this. Think, I think the deputy mayor's back on. Oh, she's back on. I am. I am. Thank you, everyone, and apologies for my technical difficulties. Uh, just on behalf of Mayor Dirk, and I want to thank you all uh, for agreeing to serve on this task force. Uh, Sam has outlined kind of what our hopes and dreams are for this, uh, but just I it would I would be remiss if I didn't pause to sort of reflect on the fact that uh, we are experiencing in just an unprecedented moment in the city of Seattle. Uh, not only is the challenge of the, you know, how do we move forward with replacing and and taking care of this infrastructure of those the bridge, uh, something that we will be grappling with, but on top of that, obviously managing the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, the continued uh, desire of our community and our city to move forward to advance a community that where we are able to advance uh, equitable outcomes for all residents in our community. So uh, I know that this is a a big task uh, ahead of you. I want to thank you, especially our co-chairs, uh, both um, uh, Mayor Greg Nichols. Thank you again, and uh, both Paul and Paulina Lopez. I appreciate your willingness to set up uh, uh, this lead to lead this task force, and to all the electives that have willing to serve on it. Thank you so much, and community members. And uh, I uh, look forward to engaging with you all and on advancing solutions that bring mobility and connectivity and um, uh, opportunity to our communities in Seattle. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I'm now going to turn it over to our two co-chairs. We're going to kick us off for a 30-minute opportunity for everybody to introduce themselves and, and get to know each other a little bit to the extent that's possible via the digital the digital universe. So, co-chairs, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Um, thank you so much, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Safali and uh, Sam, as well as you all. Um, my name is Paulina Lopez. I go by she, her. And I am the executive director for an environmental justice organization called the Duwamish River Cleanup Coalition, um, which is an organization that envisions um, an empowered Duwamish Valley community thriving in healthy and a just environment. I'm very honored to be here with you all today. Um, we have a very important, important task. Um, also, I really want to emphasize the importance of involving community on this process. Um, we are joining as the Duwamish Valley uh, to, with the West Seattle community for Georgetown South Park, as well as the Duwamish tribe uh, with regard to the West Seattle Bridge closure, um, because we want to make sure that we are also going to be part of the conversations as we are going to be sharing some of the impacts um, of the bridge. 
Um, as you may or may not, the Duwamish Valley is an environmental justice area that has been suffering long term of, of environmental burdens. Um, so, uh, in order to do this, to work the best way, um, I'm really uh, grateful to be part of the conversations on the solutions, as well as the action that we will be um, uh, potential solutions here that we will be exploring together. Um, I um, want to also uh, command to my um, fellow uh, representatives from Georgetown South Park, as well as the tribe and this discussion. Um, I look forward to working with you um, and, and this next how many months we're going to be together and adapting on um, the best measures to avoid further harm to um, the Duwamish Valley specifically and joining our, our efforts with the West Seattle community. Uh, these two goals that we've been um, obviously in charges for transportation mitigations during the bridge closure as well as the time lag of the bridge repair activities, including potential scenarios of replacement. Um, that was a short introduction about myself. I want to make sure that before we go on to introductions to you all, um, I would like to acknowledge also that we are in traditional land of the first people of Seattle, the Duwamish people, and that we honor with gratitude the land that itself uh, has been provided and the Duwamish tribe. Um, so, with that, I would like to start with introductions with you all. Um, if you could please um, say your name, uh, the organization, or the neighborhood that you're representing, as well as um, information or what would you like to accomplish as a in the task force as a community member uh, or organization or as a stakeholder in general. So, we thought the best way to do this will be um, doing it alphabetically. Um, so I'm going to be calling some of your names, but I, before I do that, I would like to have my co-chair, um, former Mayor Greg Nichols, to introduce himself as well as give the um, his perspective as a co-chair. Terrific. My name is uh, Greg Nichols. Uh, Mayor Durkin uh, asked uh, Paulina and I to co-chair this effort, um, and I'm looking forward to our conversations and our advice to the mayor and how we get through this. Uh, during a time of uh, unprecedented uh, other uh, important uh, global issues uh, that uh, she and and our uh, society are dealing with. So uh, please give us a little bit of uh, room here. We aren't used, to, I've chaired a thousand meetings in my public life, um, but I've never done one with 40 people um, virtually. So. We're going to be trying to figure out how we recognize people who, who want to ask a question, want to uh, say something. Uh, if we skip you, if somehow we miss the the hand up signal, um, which doesn't even show on my screen right now, uh, please give us just a little bit of room. Use the chat feature. Uh, jump up and down. We'll figure this out, um, and we are meeting a week from today at the same time. Today is mostly for background for you and for me and for Paulina, so that we've all got a kind of a, a, a similar level of, uh, of information and uh, uh, to start to work with. And then we'll jump into the uh, more the substance of it uh, and our dialogue uh, next week. So it's a pleasure to be with you and look forward to meeting many of you for the first time uh, virtually. Uh, and reconnecting with the rest of you. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. And in case I didn't emphasize enough, super thankful to you all for your time and to go along in this journey with with us. Um, so I would like to call Abby, Charlie to do an introduction and then followed by Austin Dan. Hi, my name's uh, Charlie Abel and I live here in West Seattle and uh, representing the Alaska Junction neighborhood, which you know, and the East Alaska Junction Coalition. Uh, I'm relatively new to Seattle. I lived in New York for about a decade uh, where I studied architecture, practiced architecture, uh, and moved to Seattle about three years ago and moved to West Seattle about two years ago. Uh, my hope is that I can bring my knowledge uh, as a professional of the built environment to this process and thinking about design and how it impacts our neighborhoods and the city as a whole, uh, but also recognizing I am new to West Seattle and really wanting to hear the voices of my community members who have much more experience in recognizing what this community needs uh, and bringing their voices to this uh, to this committee. Thank you. 
Dan? Uh, my name is Dan Austin, a uh, uh, restaurant owner here in uh, West Seattle at Morgan Junction. I also live there. Uh, I also have a second business uh, just south of South Park, so I'm kind of duly affected. Uh, but I'm here today representing uh, the West Seattle Chamber of Commerce, which I'm a board member and the government affairs chair. Uh, our, I'll just give you our mission. The government affairs is voted on by our board. Uh, we're here to advocate for solutions to reconnect West Seattle to the region uh, in order to ensure continuity of operations for West Seattle business community. Uh, with one of our main goals is securing a timely decision on whether to repair or replace, and then to ensure that we're, uh, we're included in the short-term mitigation plans relating to transit and movement of goods. Uh, we represent over 200 small, small businesses, and most of those business owners uh, live in the community as well. So we're here to, here to make sure we survive not just COVID and the recession afterwards, but also the lack of a bridge. Thank you, and Mark. Um, I, and I'm sorry if I may mispronounce your names or last names. Mark and then Deb. Marker. Is Mark on? Here. No, Mark? Should we move to Deb Barker and David Bestock? Okay, I'm Deb Barker. I'm a 35 year West Seattle resident and West Seattle advocate. And I know that I'm considered an outsider because I was not born and raised and grew up in West Seattle. By trade, I'm a land use planner and a union based theatrical wardrobe technician. I'm retired from my government job. I'm crazy. I'm a crazy busy community advocate and volunteer and I live in Morgan Junction. I'm representing the West Seattle Transportation Coalition, having been on that board since our inception in 2013. The WSTC is a peninsula-wide organization working to address transportation and mobility issues for the 100,000 people in the 10 square miles area between the Duwamish, sorry, the Duwamish and the Sound. WSTC is a unified voice for transportation issues to drive our elected officials and the agencies to stop overlooking West Seattle. Our motto is move the people. As a task force member, I hope to elevate the bridge closure and that's not necessarily what I'm shooting for elevation, but elevating the bridge closure discussion to the emergency that it is. District 1 knows that this is an emergency of life impacting epic proportion. But that's where the awareness is. The rest of the city, the rest of the counties, they don't know. I want the West Seattle Bridge closure to receive the same city and regional urgency as did the I-5 bridge collapse over the Skagit River. I want federal funding pots opened. I want acknowledgement of and mitigation to all the impacted communities for the entire duration of the detours. And I really want every city of Seattle department to know that it's not business as usual in West Seattle until the bridge connection is restored. Thank you. Debbie Bestock and then Ken Bowden, please. And let's... Um, Make sure we give one minute or two to introduction. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, uh, and good afternoon. My name is David Bestock. I'm the executive director of the Delridge Neighborhoods Development Association, or DNDA. Uh, our mission is to integrate art, nature, and neighborhood to build and sustain a dynamic Delridge. We run 144 units of affordable housing at seven properties throughout Delridge. Three of those are mixed use. One of them is uh, the well known Youngstown Cultural Arts Center, just four blocks south of the bridge. On a suite of environmental programs, um, including our Dollars Wetland Park and volunteer uh, efforts in 11 Seattle parks in West Seattle. Uh, and then uh, we also run a whole bunch of youth uh, leadership programs and family programs uh, at High Point and, and at various sites throughout West Seattle. Uh, born and raised in Seattle. Moved to Delridge in 2009. I'm in Berrien now, but still working in Delridge. Um, excited to be part of this group, um, mostly uh, brought on from my expertise in high rise bridges. No, I'm just kidding. I have none of that, um, but I am. Uh, I'm really interested in, in making sure that we're um, accountable to community and those most affected, particularly communities of color, 
um, uh, cultural communities and folks who who um, are are not as invited to these kinds of tables and and who are certainly among those most affected by the decisions that we'll be making. So um, that's why I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Thanks, David. Ken followed by um, Ken Bowden followed by Todd Carden. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ken Bowden. I work at Nucor Steel in West Seattle. I'm also a member of the Chamber of Commerce with Dan Austin, and uh, he said it pretty much the best. Our whole uh, kind of goal here is to reconnect the peninsula to the city, and that's for freight, that's our people, and uh, really to have a voice uh, uh, with this group and kind of the direction and, uh, and um, how this thing moves forward. Um, and that's it. Thank you for having me. Todd Carden, All right. followed by Marcy Carpenter. Yep. Hello, my name is Todd Carden. I uh, am a co-owner of Elliott Bay Brewing Company. Our first store was uh, opened in West Seattle 23 years ago. Um, I've been a resident of West Seattle for about 27 years. Um, I hope to represent both the business community and also our residents uh, who are going to battle getting in and out of the city. Um, I think that um, we have a, a huge uh, challenge to uh, open up communication and to be able to hear the voices of those who are impacted. And I think this panel represents a wide diversity of those folks. But, uh, you know, I hope to be a conduit for communication. Um, we've always been a, a community based business already getting lots of uh, feedback from folks as they've seen that we have made this list to help support this process. So I just look forward to being a positive uh, and constructive force in helping us navigate this. Thank you. Can we continue with um, Ellen Cody, Thea Byard, and uh, Be Ready, Sharina Deitch? You missed Marcy. This... My apologies. Go ahead, Marcy. Hi, my name is Marcy Carpenter. I'm a 16-year resident of the Admiral neighborhood. I'm a blind woman and president of the National Federation of the Blind of Washington. So I don't represent a specific organization here. I'm um, a busy volunteer, also like Deb, and a transit advocate, was formerly a member and chair of the Seattle Transit Advisory Board. I'm here to make sure that people using all mode and all types of people and all neighborhoods are representative, represented here, and I look forward to working with everyone on productive solutions. Eileen and Thea. Hi, I'm Eileen Cody. I'm one of the state representatives uh, for West Seattle. And I would say my claim to fame is that I rented my first apartment in West Seattle three days before the bridge broke in 1978. And uh, the anniversary of that is tomorrow, June 11th. So in case those you short timers that don't know about that. So, uh, and I live in the Morgan Junction. Thanks, I think. Thea and Shaina, Shaina. Colleen. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Colleen Desmond, and um, I am a 12 year Highland Park resident, and I'm mostly here as a voice for our neighborhood. Um, we are the, our little neighborhood, our little corner, Highland Park is now the host of all of the consumers who are using all four of the routes, um, the detours to our neighborhood. And um, I just like to be a voice for our residents and, um, and my neighbors on this committee. And I thank you for being part of it. Thanks, Colleen. Joe and Noel. Joe Fitzgibbon. Oh, okay, this is Joe Fitzgibbon. Hi, I'm... Uh... I'm your other state representative um, representing West Seattle and White Center, Burien, 
in Bashan in the State House, and I am a Highland Park resident. Do we have Noel Alspardini? No, no Noel is my uh, legislative assistant. She's not um, a member. Thank you. So let's move on with um, Katie Garrow and Peter Goldman. Don't see Katie on the screen. Okay. How about Peter Goldman? All right. Let's move with Erin uh, Goodman and Jolene from the tribe. Hi. This is Erin Goodman. I'm the executive director of the Soto Business Improvement Area, and I am here representing Soto and our freight community. Hello, everybody. My name is Jolene Haas, and I am a member of the Duwamish Tribe, and I am the director of the Duwamish Longhouse and Cultural Center on West Marginal Way. I represent the interests of the Duwamish as it relates to um, West Marginal Way improvements and access, um, safe access, and also I'm very happy to be here, be a part of this discussion, and to give our input on the future of the West Seattle Bridge. Thank you, Jolene. Council Member Lisa Herbold and followed by Newell and Annie Higuera. Hey, everybody. This is Lisa Herbold. I'm the District 1 representative uh, who serves uh, the residents of West Seattle and South Park. Um, beginning of my second term uh, representing District 1 on the council. I am a 20 year resident uh, of uh, Highland Park. And so, yes, uh, definitely um, don't have the, the lifelong cred um, as a lot of folks um, on the stakeholder group. But um, although I'm uh, sad for the circumstances, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here with all of you. Um, as I said, I, I, I've lived here in Highland Park for the last 20 years. My daughter and her family lives in High Point. My grandchildren uh, go to West Seattle Public Schools. I'm really appreciative of SDOT for pulling this, this group together. Um, it's really important that we um, express urgency and focus on reconnecting West Seattle uh, to the city, um, as well as addressing all of the impacts that uh, people will experience during the time that we don't have the bridge. Um, that's impacts to small businesses, impacts to uh, maritime and freight industry, um, transit access, um, and um, making sure that we are mitigating the impacts to the communities near West Seattle, such as South Park and Georgetown and Soto. So I uh, appreciate the ability uh, to be here with you all um, and allow your voices to lead us towards uh, making the best decisions uh, for the city. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Herbal. Do you know if uh, like the rest legislative assistants are here? Legislative assistant? No, well, and I Amanda, Jill, or Tim? I don't know if um, if if Newell is on. I, I apologize. I I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. So let's move with uh, Council Member Joe McDermott and followed by Jasmine Mady. Hi, Joe McDermott. I um, serve on the King County Council representing West Seattle, Vashon, and points south and um, northeast. Um, and lifelong resident of West Seattle. In fact, remember driving over the um, quote unquote new West Seattle Bridge for the first time delivering catering for Husky Deli, where I was working at the time. Um, what I hope to be able to what I intend to bring to this, in addition to so many of the other points that have already been brought up, is to make sure that we're doing dual work on any short term um, ability to use the existing bridge again and um, not delay for a moment long term work on replacing a permanent replacement, knowing it will not have a long lifespan if it is reopened, to make sure that we don't lose any time on either front. Um, that we're working both simultaneously. And for as much as the impacts are to um, 
residents and commuters and business and industry, as people have spoken about, um, who live and are based in West Seattle, the people that I really feel sorry for in this um, crisis are the people who are stuck outside West Seattle and have a harder time getting to paradise. Thank you, Council Member. Um, do we have Jasmine and the Senator Joe Wynn? I think we skipped uh, four of our uh, panelists, starting with Ann Higuera. Um, I'm here. Oh, okay. Um, my name's Ann Higuera. Um, I'm a co-owner of Ventana Construction. Um, moved to uh, West Seattle in 1999, and we started our business in 2003. So been in the Morgan Junction neighborhood for 20 years between living and working there. And we moved to Vashon five years ago. So I have the added experience of, um, of trying to get to West Seattle from there. Um, and I'm really excited to be a part of this group. I think the, uh, the value that we all bring is not just who we're representing and who our businesses are, but all of the connections that we have. And when you're in a community for 20 or 30 or if you're lucky enough, you were born there. Um, uh, you you make connections all the way across the board, and uh, I think that's the strength of this committee. It's really great to see so many faces that I recognize. So thanks for making us a part of it. Thank you, Anne. I'm sorry I skip you. Amanda Kirk, followed by Jill Mucky. Hey, so I'm Amanda Kirk. I'm a local real estate agent. I live in Admiral, um, and I'm here today representing West Seattle Bridge. Now coalition, um, and I'm here specifically to create urgency, accountability, transparency, and inclusiveness. And I'm very honored to be a part of this. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Amanda. Jill Mackey, followed by Tig Mc McCornell. Hi, I'm Jill Mackey. I work with Vigor. Vigor uh, runs the Harbor Island Shipyard at the far north end of Harbor Island. The shipyard's been in operation for 100 years, more than 100 years. We have about 600 skilled trades jobs on site right now. That grows and shrinks a little bit over time, but we do an enormous amount of work in support of the U.S. Navy, uh, as well as the commercial fishing fleet. And within the next year or two, we'll begin working on the state's new hybrid electric ferries here in um, Harbor Island. So, um, you know, industrial jobs matter an awful lot as it relates to uh, middle wage jobs and skilled trades jobs. And so that's our focus here. We appreciate the focus and I love uh, the Amanda's focus on urgency and transparency. Those are excellent traits uh, to keep uh, front and center during this time. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have Tim McCornell? Uh, yeah, I'm here. I don't know if my voice thing is working. I just switched computers. It is. Okay. Hi, I'm Tim McConnell. Uh, I live and work in the Admiral District. I'm a 30 year West Seattle resident and uh, my wife and I own West Seattle Runner and we've been doing business here for 10 years. Uh, I'm honored to represent uh, the people of the Admiral District and fitness people in general. Thank you, team. So I'm going to go with Yasmin Mehdi and um, Senator Joe Mwin. Hi, I'm Yasmin Mehdi. I am here representing Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. She uh, is a West Seattle resident. Um, I am the deputy district director. Um, and, and really, our primary goals here are to figure out how to make sure that federal resources are available for this project um, whenever it's needed. Thanks for having me. So this is Joe Wynn, um, state senator here in the West Seattle area, uh, born and raised in the area, but live in the Genesee, here, uh, Genesee Hill area now. So uh, thank you for the time and looking forward to figuring out next steps. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go with Alex Peterson, followed by Toby Taylor. Good afternoon, everyone. This is council member Alex Peterson. I'm the chair of the Seattle City Government's Transportation Committee. Uh, reconnecting West Seattle to the rest of Seattle is a, is a major priority, and I'll be working closely with Councilmember Lisa Herbold on this. And want to 
thank everybody for, for being on this task force so we can center the voices of those who are directly impacted by this, this closure of the bridge. We need to replace or repair it immediately and look forward to working with all of you to get it done as quickly as possible. And again, thank you for your time to be here to so that we can hear from you directly. Thank you, Councilmember. Toby. Thank you. And Toby Thaler is on my staff, and he's not on this particular call. Got it. Thank you, Councilmember Peterson. Let's go with uh, Joan Persack, uh, followed by Laura Redford. Uh, thank you, Paulina, and thank you, Honorable Nichols, for the opportunity to. Uh, be heard on behalf of the Georgetown neighborhood. Uh, I've lived here for 14 years, lived in Seattle for 30, and I spent a fair amount of that time in West Seattle too, so familiar with the issues out there. Uh, also represent the maritime trades on the Martin Luther King County Labor Council, and I have a fair amount of policy experience in freight and land use in the area. Um, what I wish to bring to the table is to propose some short term and low cost mitigation for the 90,000 potential car trips daily uh, that will be funneled through Georgetown uh, via Highland Park, Roxbury, West Marginal Land, South Park. We're the little, we're the little point on the, on the funnel on that, um, as well as to encourage some long term solutions that are equitable and encourage some cost effective mode shifting for residents of West Seattle for the future so that uh, everybody can benefit uh for long-term solutions so appreciate the time and uh thank you laura redford hi my name is laura radford i'm the executive director of the west seattle junction association i represent 35 businesses and also downtown west seattle I've been in West Seattle for 20 years. I started Hot Wire Coffee 16 years ago, and I took over the leadership of the junction a little over four years ago. Um, I'm excited to be a part of this group and this task force. We would like to definitely see how we're going to move forward as a district and looking forward to having um, productive conversations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Greg Ramirez, followed by Rachel Smith. Hey, everybody. My name is Greg Ramirez. I am the chair of the Georgetown Community Council Board of Directors, um, which represents the Georgetown community. Um, I am a lifelong resident of Georgetown. I grew up in the neighborhood. I'm raising a family of my own here now. Um, my hope is to be able to uh, lift up the concerns of the Georgetown community uh, as we're being impacted by this the bridge closure, uh, as well as work with all of you to, similar to what John said, you know, identify some some solutions, uh, both in the short term and long term, that um, will have some, you know, lasting impacts on everybody um, involved. So I look forward to working with all of you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Um, Rachel was made followed by Lily Clifton. Uh, Lily is my uh, 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 team member, so she will not be speaking here today, but uh, thank you all. I'm Rachel Smith, I'm the Deputy County Executive, and I'm here representing King County Executive Dow Constantine, uh, who I think shows up in this space as the leader of the county and the head of Metro and the water taxi and a Sound Transit board member but probably uh, most as a vocal West Seattle constituent. Um, and I want to also acknowledge my former boss, uh, Mayor Greg Nichols, who it's lovely to see on this call. And I'm so excited to be uh, working with him on transportation issues again. Um, I'm a lover of all things transportation. And uh, I would say that I hope that we can, as a group, bring some energy and some connective tissue between the technical leaders, the government leaders, the community leaders, and sort of um, play that role of pulling together our civic muscle to solve this really critical transportation infrastructure problem. Thank you all for having me. Thank you, Rachel. We're going to move with Commissioner Peter Steinberg and uh, Lindsay Wolpe. Maybe he's calling. Um, Okay, um, looks like we don't have for Commissioner Steinberg here. I think we can't hear him. He's there, but oh. we can't hear him yet. All right, 
Um, Commissioner, we can't hear you. Now everyone's frozen. <laughs> the beauty of technology. Amen. Should we move to <laughs> Lindsay Wolpa from the port? Will Commissioner Steinberg this is the audio? We still can't hear you, Commissioner. Yeah. Why don't we move to Lindsay Wolpa and we come back to Commissioner Steinberg? I am here to support the commissioner. So I know he's, I'm seeing text that he's trying to get on. Um, so just here to support him and the, both the Port of Seattle and the Northwest Seaport Alliance, his interest, Commissioner Steinbrook is both president as well as the co-chair of the Seaport Alliance, our joint venture with the Port of Tacoma on our container businesses. I see he's still not able to join or to speak. Thank you, Nancy. Um, please do let him know that if he picks, we we will love to hear from him. Um, let's move from uh, to Ali Thompson and Bob Waters. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ali Thompson. Uh, my pronouns are she/her. I am representing mainly the South Park Neighborhood Association. I'm also involved in Duwamish Valley Safe Streets and the uh, District One Community Network. Um, I'm here to elevate the voices of the Duwamish Valley and to address some of the host impacts we and other host neighborhoods are experiencing um, while you know working with all of you to hopefully reconnect West Seattle as, as fast as we can. Um, in my day job, I work in low-income housing in, in Tacoma, so I'm especially interested in equity and identifying impacts on our low-income neighbors. Good afternoon, I'm Bob Waters. I'm Senior Vice President for SSA Marine. SSA Marine is a worldwide marine terminal operator. We've been headquartered on the south tip of the Harbor Island underneath the bridge for the last 60 years. And we operate uh, Terminals 5 and Terminal 18, as well as Terminal 30. And I'm really here to represent the maritime industry and the tens of thousands of uh, jobs and businesses that are supported by that critical infrastructure that we have there in the marine terminals in um, the Port of Seattle. Um, my goal, my hope is to uh, help in generating a expeditious and cost effective short term and long term solutions for the bridge that checks as many boxes as absolutely possible to uh, be inclusive of all all groups needs all stakeholders needs. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Bob. Um, from the community stakeholders, if there is somebody that I miss, please go ahead and introduce yourself before we move into introducing staff uh, from SDOT and the city in general. Anyone that I missed? Commissioner Steinberg, back with the audio. Not yet. <laughs> Paulina? Yeah. I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, those introductions were very helpful, uh, but I particularly want to thank the elected officials who've taken time. They, uh, we have uh, Lisa Herbolt and Alex Peterson from the Seattle City Council. Uh, they represent both the geographic area and the subject area on the council. And I know you've got budget issues that you're going to be dealing with in just a few minutes, uh, but thank you for taking the time to be with us. Joe McDermott, who represents uh, this area on the King County Council, holding a seat that uh, I uh, once held. Uh, thank you for taking your time. You've got a lot on your plate as well. Eileen Cody and Joe Fitzgibbon, you represent our, us very well in the Washington State House, and this is supposed to be your season off. Uh, so thank you for being here and uh, uh, helping us to figure out some uh, some answers. And uh, Commissioner Steinberg, I'm sorry that you're somehow not able to, uh, to uh, voice yourself. I know you will find ways to do that through this process, uh, but you represent the entire county, and that's a, a huge responsibility, and uh, we want to thank you for taking time uh, personally to be here. Uh, and, of course, the deputy mayor who gave us our charge, 
uh, and the deputy county executive uh, who was well trained by a previous mayor's uh, office. Uh, thank you for uh, being part of uh, today's conversation. This is gonna be a long process. It's gonna be a year, perhaps more, perhaps a little less. Uh, and we're gonna start out very intensely. We're gonna meet a week from today, same time. We're going to be uh, hearing very shortly on uh, the technical information about whether this bridge can be fixed. And then if it turns out it can be fixed, we're gonna to need to wrestle with the issue of should it be fixed uh, or should we go directly to a more permanent uh, solution? So we've got our work cut out for us. And thank you for volunteering uh, and being willing to share your voice and thoughts and, uh, and hard work on this. It's gonna be uh, interesting. I think at times it might be fun uh, and hopefully at some point we'll all get to be in the same room together. So it'll have to be a pretty big room if we're gonna appropriately distance ourselves. So thank you all. And uh, Paulina, we're gonna have Michael talk to us a little bit about, uh, first he's gonna introduce the support staff who are here uh, from uh, SDOT or potentially other agencies. And then uh, he's going to uh, talk to us about some of the, uh, some of the logistics of, of our work. Michael. Mayor Nichols, thank you so much. Um, so we're so close to being on track and on target for time here, and I don't want to short circuit any of the important information that the task force members need. So I'll be very brief despite tendencies for loquaciousness. Um, so just a reminder, everyone's doing a fantastic job of staying muted. So thank you and appreciate. Oh, oh I didn't recognize our state senator, uh, Joe. Joe. Uh, is on our call, I believe, but he wasn't on the video. So uh, I'm very sorry, Senator Nguyen, that, that I left you off of that list. Thank you for being part of this. Go ahead. Right, thank you. Thank you. So just a reminder, st staying on mute. And I think the most uh, important piece to just cover here are, are two things. For everybody who is um, listening in to today's task force meeting, um, but is not a task force member, uh, and wants to share thoughts, opinions, et cetera, we've provided a Google form that's been linked to in the chat box to all uh, public participants where you can share your thoughts and we will pass those all on directly to task force members. So thank you very much for, for sharing your time with us this afternoon and sharing your thoughts through the Google form. Um, and then secondly, uh, this is more of a homework assignment, which we will, um, come back to at the very end here. Um, but uh, Paulina has laid out uh, some very thoughtful um, uh, pro proposals, uh, what we're calling working agreements for how everybody can come together and work collaboratively, constructively, um, and agree in a, on a framework for engagement for carrying this important work forward. And so um, at the suggestion of, of Bill and Diane, our two co-chairs, we will be sharing that document with you and we'll be looking for uh, a small handful of, of folks who, who might uh, raise a hand and help uh, sort of boil that list down into the cogent pieces that we think uh, brings everybody on the task force together in a really thoughtful way. So Bill and Diane will be uh, following up and sharing out that, that information. And then quickly, we're gonna turn it back over to our co two co-chairs. We're gonna sort of provide uh, a, a quick overview of the task force and some of the things that, that they hope to cover in the coming uh, weeks and days, maybe months, as uh, Mary Nichols alluded to. And uh, and then we will hear from some of the um, SDOT folks who have been working on the West Seattle Bridge very closely. We're going to hear from Heather Marks, who is our Director of Downtown Mobility and leading the West Seattle Bridge uh, effort for SDOT. We're going to hear Matt Donahue, uh, who is our subject matter expert in all things bridges, and uh, particularly the West Seattle Bridge. Then we're going to hear from Megan Shep Shepard, our Deputy Director of Downtown Mobility, who's going to give us a better sense of, of how we have been interacting with all of the different community groups, uh, all the different business stakeholders, um, broader sort of sense of our communications goals and objectives, um, and then we're going to wrap it up with some quick sort of concluding homework assignments for everybody and a bit of forecasting for what comes next week. 
and turn it back over to our two co-chairs. So with that, uh, I will turn it back over to them now before we dive into the substance, uh, starting with Heather Marks and, and Matt Donahue. Alina, I think that's your cue. I think we're just going to do the introductions from staff. Heather, would you like to start? I really, I really would. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, Paulina. Um, I'd like to also acknowledge, just like uh, Rachel Smith, my old boss, Greg Nichols, it is a pleasure uh, to see your face regularly. Uh, my name is Heather Marks. I am the Director of Downtown Mobility for Seattle's Department of Transportation and have been asked to be the program director for the West Seattle Bridge Safety Program. That includes the capital delivery, the communications, as well as the transportation operations uh, and mitigation uh, work that we are going to be doing. Um, I have uh, the pleasure to live in West Seattle and have lived here for the past 25-ish years. Uh, I live in sort of that no man's land between Gatewood, Fauntleroy, and Westwood, um, and uh, understand very well the, the criticality of getting the bridge back online. So uh, I can assure you that my focus is laser like. Matt? Matt? Oh, oh, did you want, you want me to start presenting or did you want everybody to, to introduce themselves? Would you mind introducing the team first, Heather? Please, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I'm so Thank sorry. Um, so Bill Laborde uh, is a member of our team. He is one of the folks who is uh, assigned to support um, the West Seattle uh, Bridge Community Task Force, as well as Diane Wyatter. Uh, as task force members, you will hear from them regularly with materials that um, uh, that will support our conversations here. I want to note that it is our intention to get materials out to you uh, as expeditiously as we can, because we do want folks to have an opportunity to review those things uh, before we meet. Um, uh, also, Megan Shepard is uh, the Deputy Director of Downtown Mobility. She and I are sort of a double act, um, and she is supporting all of the communications. Um, uh, Michael Harold is our communications director at SDOT and um, has uh, graciously agreed to serve uh, as the facilitator until we get um, a communications firm on for on board to uh, support that work uh, regularly. Uh, we're also joined by Jessica Alinen, who is Sam B Zimbabwe's executive assistant, and you will find many appointments coming to you from her. Um, I am probably oh. Matt Donahue, you will hear from shortly. He is extraordinary and you will uh, come to appreciate and understand uh, the richness of his experience. So um, just to turn to our presentation, uh, the community task force, uh, we've written down some purpose and objectives for uh, folks to consider. Uh, the purpose, and I'm just gonna read this to you because um, sometimes it's better to hear it than to read it. Uh, the purpose is to help ensure transparency, clear communication, and broad community engagement around both traffic mitigation efforts and the future path forward for the West Seattle High Rise Bridge. Uh, your objectives, your assignment, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to advise on key bridge and finance decisions, to guide traffic mitigation and project prioritization, and to bring forth community values, priorities, and ideas. And just from listening to everybody's introductions, I think uh, we are going to have a really rich uh, conversation that absolutely centers the values of our community. Next slide, please. So, um, in order to uh, in order to move forward um, with the bridge, we thought it was really important for everybody to understand the possible pathways that we could take, um, and the decision point for this. Uh, for these pathways is coming up shortly, uh, which is why we are front loading so many meetings uh, here in the lovely month of June. Um, at the, uh, to the left side of the, the graphic, you'll see the summer 2020 decision point. Um, 
uh, as Mayor Nichols mentioned, we are uh, going to take on whether the bridge can be repaired and then also whether repair is in fact the best, uh, the best move forward. Um, right now, and Matt will talk more about this, we are collecting data from the bridge, which is guiding us uh, toward the knowledge that we need to decide whether repair or replacement uh, is the best uh, the best path forward. Um, I see that uh, Commissioner Steinbrook is is with us. Do do we want to give him a moment? We have Commissioner Steinbrook, and then Peter Goldman is also acknowledged. He's got his his line working, so so that might be uh, a good chance for them to share sure. a word or two. And and uh, if our two co chairs want to frame anything up before before diving into some of the the substance here. Steinbrook. I, I jinx you. Um, hey, how about Peter? Let's 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 try that. Peter Goldman. Okay. Uh, <laughs> instead, I'll just proceed, and um, we will know that both. Uh, Commissioner Steinbrook, as well as Peter Goldman, are enthusiastic uh, supporters of our efforts here. So if we go with the repair route, um, there is work to be done. We have to stabilize and strengthen the bridge. Uh, then we have to design and complete uh, shoring uh, work and then uh, design for the repair. Then, of course, the repair has to happen. And if this is the route that we choose, we could have traffic a limited amount of traffic back on the bridge as early as 2022. Uh, that would still involve replacement of the bridge because uh, that limited um, that limited access to the bridge is obviously not going to support the needs of West Seattle. Um, if we uh, so uh, in this case, we would uh, have a full fully replaced bridge with a 75 year lifespan in 2023. Uh, if we choose the replace scenario, then we still have to stabilize and strengthen the bridge because we really don't want to fall it, want it to fall down of its own accord. Uh, we have to continue to do shoring and design work. The design work in this case, though, would be to um, for controlled demolition as well as the design work for the actual bridge. In this scenario, we wouldn't have traffic back on the bridge until 2024 or 2026 but it would be a full opening with a brand new bridge. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this, I know this is sort of a confusing graphic or, or maybe it isn't, but it shows, um, it shows our project on a number of tracks. Uh, there is the structural element of bridge repair or replacement. Uh, there's the community task force uh, element, which is going to be going throughout the project. Uh, traffic mitigation is um, really front loaded in terms of community effort, but then um, gets turned over to SDOT for implementation. Project finance is critical because I'm, I'm sure everyone on the call is aware that uh, bridges are not free. Uh, so there are grant applications that need to happen. I wonder if somebody is not muted. I'm, um, and uh, the mayor's proposed budget coming up here in the fall, of course, the council then gets to adopt that budget. And um, we also have an opportunity for a legislative session at the state level. And uh, early next year, we may, um, we may have an opportunity for a federal grant. Uh, during uh, the final line here is um, note where we, uh, SDOT, are going to be briefing the city council. Um, we brief the mayor each and every week. Um, later this fall, we're going to establish uh, the CIP project, the capital improvement project, which is like the, um, the financial mechanism uh, by which the, the bridge becomes a, a real project. Um, and we also uh, will be engaging with uh, the mayor's office as well as the city council on uh, hoping to include 
the West Seattle Bridge in the city's legislative agenda. Next slide, please. Our priorities for this project, um, as I mentioned, I'm a, a West Seattle resident, and so I'm feeling these priorities in my heart, not just uh, reading them on a piece of paper. Uh, public safety is always our number one concern, and public safety is the reason that we closed the bridge in the first place. Uh, we, all of us at SDOT and at the city, feel a very urgent need to return traffic to the West Seattle High Bridge and want to make sure that we are mitigating to the extent possible uh, traffic during the time that the bridge is closed. Uh, we need to stabilize and shore the West Seattle Bridge. When, when the bridge comes down, we want to make sure it's because we want it to come down, not uh, because we haven't done the work that we need to do to keep it uh, in place. We, are, we want to closely monitor and maintain the low Spokane Street swing bridge. Uh, everyone knows how important that low bridge is when the high bridge is unavailable, and that structure is um, is also uh, something that we need to, to take care of, maintain, and watch closely. Uh, we also want to assess and repa uh, assess the feasibility for repair, uh, the timeline for repair, and the cost for the entire project, and of course, maintain clear communication and transparency throughout uh, this whole process. Uh, I note that many of you are um, here as members of other larger groups. Um, Sam Zimbabwe and I have a, a, a strategy that we will brief anyone, anytime, anywhere. And so if you would like me to come and brief your group uh, specifically, I'm very happy to do that. Next slide, please. Uh, the, br the bridge was opened in 1984. Uh, it is cast in place concrete and steel. Uh, it is one of a kind that and was uniquely designed for uh, our own topography and geography. Many of you on the call remember as it was built. Uh, it was designed for three lanes in either direction and has the highest daily traffic volumes of all SDOT roadways with 84,000 trips per day in 2019 and actually as many as 19,000 transit riders. Uh, next slide, please. Hey, actually at this point, uh, I think I want to turn it over to Matt to talk. Thanks, Heather. You're welcome. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Heather. Good afternoon, everyone. So since we, uh, my name is Matt Donahue. I'm the interim director for roadway structures, um, which is a fancy way of saying I'm the bridge engineer for the city of Seattle or lead bridge engineer, uh, leading a team of other bridge inspection engineers, bridge maintenance engineers, uh, skilled tradecraft maintenance crews and all of the uh, operators who uh, operate our movable bridges. Uh, and I'm, I'm very glad to be here today to, to speak with this group about what we've been doing on the bridge since we closed it on March 23rd of this year. Uh, since we closed it, we've been on the bridge daily um, for you know quite long hours. Uh, and we have found uh, through that time from March 23rd until now that the bridge has continued to crack under its own weight and also as a result of other types of live load like thermal stress. So that indicates to us that it was um, prudent for public safety to take live load off the bridge when we did. Um, and as, I think as many folks recall, um, we made that decision based on uh, analysis and inspection work that we've been doing for other reasons on the bridge for several months. And the fact that the crack propagation rate that we had been observing took off like a shot over a course of three weeks in March, it cracked to an order of magnitude that we hadn't seen before uh, or had only seen before over months and years. So those cracks have continued to grow, albeit at a slower rate. Um, because of that inspection and crack mapping work that we've done, because we put automated uh, shape array instrumentation on the top of the bridge and uh, quite a, a lengthy suite of displacement and crack width gauges on the inside and extents of the bridge, we have a better understanding of what it's going to take to stabilize the bridge and keep it from going to collapse. Uh, but there is, you know, still um, 
uh, quite a bit of uncertainty. And also, I should mention that a lot of that work has also involved what we call non-destructive evaluation. So using pulse echo technology to look at crack, uh, crack depth in specific locations, that's very important if it's a surface crack or if it goes all the way through the floor, the uh, wall, the girder. Um, we've, we've also done uh, used a couple types of ground penetrating radar, uh, either to be used horizontally or vertically, to look at the condition of the uh, steel inside the bridge and whether or not is, it's still in good condition. And so all that data, uh, that those programs have largely been completed, and we're now analyzing that data to see what it tells us about the condition of the bridge. So safety is a top priority through all this. That's our original reason for closing uh, the bridge in the first place. Uh, part of that instrumentation that I mentioned, uh, structural health instrumentation is what we call it, is uh, used to analyze the bridge, but it's also there because it's set up to monitor changes in the cracks of the bridge or its overall length or its global position. And if it moves past a certain point or if anything changes past a certain point, it's pumped through a website that's run by the people who installed the instrumentation for us. And it's set to alarm at various threshold levels, whether it's a warning just to alert us that something's happening, or if it's a big change, uh, an alarm that would instigate, um, I'm essentially the lead for the response team. Uh, we call them MORP, the Monitoring and Operations Response Team for all this instrumentation data. Uh, to, and we're set up to respond 24-7, 365. And then I'm the person in responsible charge who would have to make the call if a change is significant enough to call 911 and implement our emergency response plan that we've developed over the last several weeks with all of our EMS partners with Office of Emergency Management, Police, Fire, Coast Guard, and, and several uh, several other stakeholders. We've also uh, taken a look at, as, to develop that ERP or emergency response plan, we've taken a look at how this bridge could fail if it was to go to failure unexpectedly. Um, and so we, uh, WSP, our consultant partner on a lot of this work, uh, ran different uh, modeling. The model that they developed for analysis purposes, they ran different scenarios to see what the most likely ways are that it would fail. Generally speaking, it would be a main failure of the center of the center span that would drop or break in one spot and peel away. This would also have effects on the tail spans as a lot of those loads that are carried across the center span are redistributed to the back of the bridge. And that group that worked on that ERP still meets uh, weekly, I think, on Tuesdays and Thursdays to continue to discuss our uh, and, and uh, bolster our operational readiness to respond should we get into an emergency situation in terms of collapse. Next slide, please. So we're, we're looking at this. Um, it would be we would be would have been remiss and we've been very, very conscious since the uh, even before the bridge was closed that anything that we do on this has multiple effects and that has to be worked on in multiple parallel paths. So although we see this as a three phase uh, approach from a technical standpoint to kind of break down specific bodies of work, all three of these phases have been are currently being worked on in parallel. Um, so we started with the closure of the bridge and try to you know further assess or have further assess the problem or systemically what's wrong with the bridge um, in terms of mapping of cracks and doing all this NDE and instrumentation work that I mentioned. Um, we pretty soon after, within a couple of weeks after uh, closure of the bridge, started working on what we knew to be required to continue to stabilize the bridge in terms of intermediate uh, crack arrest repairs, as well as releasing a problematic bearing that at certain points in the year appears to be locked up, which induces a large longitudinal or axial force into the bridge, which exacer exacerbates the existing cracking. Um, so that's uh, moved quite far along. We actually issued drawings for construction of that uh, just late last week. And then also to be doing the early conceptual work on what repair or different replacement scenarios would look like as part of a cost benefit analysis uh, through this summer to try and get us to that decision point, repair or replace. Um, so that, that cost benefit analysis work has been going on for several weeks now. Next slide, please. So uh, again, we're trying to move ahead on multiple uh, paths. And so all of this instrumentation is now up and running on both the high bridge and the low bridge. Uh, the low bridge uh, has some deterioration issues given its age and because it's being loaded up as the main bypass uh, through that corridor uh, from the high bridge, uh, we put similar instrumentation inside the low bridge as well. High bridge instrumentation is up commissioned and our response protocols have been drilled and tested over the last several weeks. We're now commissioning a similar system on the low bridge, uh, which should be ready to go in the next two to three weeks. 
Uh, so we continue to monitor cracks on the high bridge on a daily basis, even though we're not doing physical safety sweeps on the bridge every morning as we had been up until the end of last week. Um, as I mentioned, we issued drawings for construction for the crack uh, arrest measures and Pier 18 work um, and are uh, pushing uh, to get a, our, our contract that we've been working with under the full extent of a contract to do all this work. That should happen within the next week or so. Um, and I think as many of you folks know, we issued an RFQ uh, for a design uh, consultant to come on board and start working on replacement planning now, even before we've actually be uh, begun the initial emergency repairs to the bridge. So that was released on the 2nd of June, and I think it has a one month turnaround for interested consultants to respond with their statement of qualifications. Next slide, please. With that, I'll turn it back over to, I believe, Megan to talk about traffic. Thanks, you gave me just enough time to find my unmute button. Um, hello everyone, welcome. I am not a traffic engineer, but on behalf of our entire team that's working on traffic mitigation, as many of you know, since the bridge was closed, we have been working on the types of transportation engineering projects and operational projects that are trying to help manage some of the impacts of the new detour routes and some of the impacts that those are having on surrounding neighborhoods. Um, so this list here, which I'm not gonna read out loud to you, um, just highlights how we're trying to gather better information about where traffic volume are changing. Um, we are adjusting signal. Now that we've got better signal um, equipment out there, we can adjust signal timing in real time. Uh, so we are doing that. We're trying to share information via dynamic message signs. We have put in a new uh, temporary signal at Highland Parkway South and Southwest Holden Street. Um, and we've made some significant improvements to the five-way Chelan intersection, um, which is really one of the most difficult uh, choke points that we know a lot of people are experiencing right now. Um, but we know that that is not enough. That's just like the things we've been able to act quickly and get out there. Um, additional projects are needed and options are needed, both for the neighborhoods that are being impacted by new detour traffic. And we've heard many of you speak to that today when you talked about the interest of your neighborhoods or your community. Um, and then we also know for all of you who, that are living on the peninsula who are concerned about how you will travel to other places and how others will travel to you, especially as the governor's orders continue to be lifted and adjusted. So we have been working working um, on a traffic mitigation planning effort. And um, we'll be talking a lot more about that at our meeting next week. Um, and I know that many of you have already been talking to our outreach team um, and helping inform how we can make that a more community-led process. Um, the community is um, central and your role here as our task force is essential to helping us as we deal with all the difficult facets um, of this effort. So there are some very standard ways that people can stay up to date. Um, transparency is at the forefront and trying to bring people in the public information as quickly as possible. To that end, we update our website. We put out blogs like nobody's business, generally at least one, if not two a week. We have a listserv that's got over 2,300 folks signed up. And so whenever we do a blog update, they find out right away. And we do a lot of media interviews. We know that's a helpful way to reach a lot of people. Um, in addition to your efforts, which are really to work across all the affected neighborhoods and modes and to bring in multiple perspectives, um, we have uh, two other advisory groups that are meeting. One of them is a maritime town hall that meets monthly. This is a lot of the affected folks on Harbor Island and along West Marginal Way and in Soto from the maritime and industrial community. Um, and so we're sharing information there regularly with them um, and giving them a portal to bring the concerns of the most pressing um, to those groups. And several of you are here on the task force as well. Um, who who can help us make the connection between what the task force is talking about and what we discuss at the Maritime Town Hall. We also have an employer resource group, which represents um, a lot of private mobility, as well as some of the region's largest employers. And we're working with that group to help understand 
how we can help move people on and off the peninsula and what some creative um, opportunities and what employers might be able to do to help people um, move on and off the peninsula um, in the future. So we want our engagement to be both very, very broad so that everybody has the opportunity to be informed and feel like they know uh, where we are in the process um, and also target it. And to that end, um, it is central to this that a racial equity lens is used to prioritize those most impacted by the closure. Um, we will be specifically reaching out to groups that have not traditionally been a part of the conversation and using all the tools at our disposal. The city's Department of Neighborhoods is our partner in this, and they are conducting and leading a lot of our efforts um, and our outreach. Um, I also want to acknowledge the city's Office of Economic Development, who is helping us uh, get to know um, and build a relationship with those in the maritime and industrial community affected by the closure, too. So, um, we will continue, like, you know, part of our relationship together is to hear from you when we need to be adding new tools and new tactics and listening to new voices. And then part of our job will be to bring that information and share back with all of you what we're hearing from the public through a variety of tools and forums. And with that, I'm turning it back over to Michael Harold. Wonderful. Thank you, Megan. And even ahead of schedule, um, which is truly a unique thing and, and delight, something I always appreciate. Um, so before I turn it back over to our co-chairs, um, perhaps for, for some concluding thoughts, um, I just want to do a little recap of things uh, that have happened here today and a little bit just about the nuts and bolts for, for um, meetings going forward. So just a reminder, Bill and Diane, who, who uh, hopefully everybody saw sort of waving and will become a familiar name in all of your inboxes, remain a resource, right? So we had today's conversation, but the conversation is ongoing and they're a great uh, touch point for everyone who needs additional information uh, and is seeking clarity. Um, also, we're reminded that we're going to be looking for volunteers to shape our working agreements. And that's something that hopefully everybody will have time to review uh, prior to the next meeting and then uh, potentially discuss and adopt. And so we'll be looking for some additional addi additional information from Bill and Diane in that regard. Um, and then finally, to Heather's point, um, there is a real commitment from us to, this is a very rapidly moving situation, um, but uh, a commitment to be sharing materials uh, with more daylight between them hitting your inbox and, and everyone showing up on the next call. Um, and so we will be working towards that commitment. And then just finally a reminder, the next meeting is uh, Wednesday, June 17th at 1 p.m. Just logistically how that's going to happen is it's going to come as a calendar invite. Uh, to all of you from, from SDOT Director Sam Zimbabwe's calendar. And then we'll have a very specific link in it for you to arrive to the call as a, uh, as a panelist, as a participant. So it's just important to remember to use that link in case you see a, a public link or something somewhere else uh, sort of bouncing around. Please use the link that's specific um, to you. And then just format wise, each meeting will always uh, include an update from uh, from our bridge engineer uh, on sort of the, the health of the bridge, uh, but then task force will have uh, clarifying agendas that, that go with. And uh, at the moment now looking like we will be leaning more into discussion around the Reconnect West Seattle uh, proposal and thoughts and, and reactions and comments, et cetera, um, and potentially items surrounding uh, access to the low bridge. But those agendas will be firmed up uh, closer, closer to the meeting. So with that, uh, I will turn it back over to our co-chairs um, and acknowledging that we do uh, have a comment from uh, Commissioner Steinbrook uh, here and um, wanting to just make sure everyone sees that and is able to, to read. Thank you. Alina? Um, thank you so much, Michael, and all the presenters. Um, I wanted to, you know, just bring us back um, a reminder that obviously as the first meeting, um, there's a lot of logistics and ground that we cover. We're going to be embarking on a very important task. And um, I just want to reinforce, you know, the importance of 
learning how to work with each other. Many of us uh, haven't had the pleasure yet to work um, in this type of uh, me in, in this type of committee. So I, I really appreciate that we get um, to look into those um, group agreements. Uh, we have a long uh, journey to go through, and it's important as we move forward that we look into transparency and a good communication. Um, also, you know, assuming like the best intentions of us, but obviously we all are representing different um, uh, stakeholders. So uh, we're gonna provide that um, opportunities for all of us to be engaging in deep conversations. Today was just um, laying uh, the ground and understanding how the process is gonna work. I look forward to working together with you all. Um, I also wanted to mention that, um, you know, there is a lot of behind the scenes work and acknowledge that um, uh, together with our co-chair, we, we've we been you know, drafting many of the agendas, co-drafting co with um, the city, but I look forward to hearing from you all. Um, we're just your co-chairs, but we are part of the team. So if you ever want to um, engage in a dialogue or, or make suggestions or recommendations, I really call um, for that, allowing the input and the feedback so we can uh, act as a team. Um, I wanted to thank you again for your time today. Um, my email is, um, I'm going to type it right now. So if you want to have further conversations, um, Greg and I are already receiving a lot of emails from different stakeholders and I look forward to, you know, having conversations as community, um, as well. Um, I think that's important that we acknowledge that, you know, with city officials, we're working with, um, with um, this, the best intention to make it work, and uh, but we also need our community time to debrief, and lots of those will be happening. Greg, thank you all uh, for your time. I want to just acknowledge a couple of things. One, uh, Sharon and I moved to West Seattle as a newlywed couple while the old bridge uh, was out and before the high-level bridge was built. Yeah, uh, we moved in April of 1979. Uh, so we've been through this before, but then at least there was a four lane uh, bascule bridge that provided some capacity uh, in the uh, in the interim between the uh, uh, the ship hitting the span and the new one being built. Uh, I want to thank SDOT and the mayor for the action they took on March 23rd. Not because I like what happened, uh, because certainly uh, I don't. We went from having a 10 minute uh, commute to Costco to having a 40 minute commute. Um, and, but it was in the best interest of the safety of our community. And that was a gutsy call. Uh, and so I, I want to thank them for being willing to, to take the heat and, uh, uh, and to make sure that we were safe. Uh, secondly, Mayor Durkin has asked us to give her uh, her give her advice as we go through this process and we will not be taking votes or anything. So there's not going to be an up or down, but we are going to give her our best thinking on the issues as we see them through this process. The first of which will be whether the bridge can be fixed and then whether it should be fixed uh, and then what it should be replaced with. Uh, finally, this is an awkward platform. Uh, we're, we're going to get better at it, I hope, um, and uh, hopefully the technology also will get a bit better so that uh, the two Peters will be able to participate uh, uh, as well. But if you've got any feedback on this, please share it with the uh, SDOT staff. Please share it with Paulina and I so that as we go into future meetings, we can make it a, a better experience for everybody. Um, and if you've got thoughts, questions that didn't get answered in the presentation, uh, you've got the roster, it's got uh, our emails on it, please let us know. Uh, between now and next Wednesday, uh, we were hoping to have a, one the following Wednesday. That's going to have to be rescheduled because of a, a conflict with some city council budget decisions, but we will have one that following week, I believe, as well. So. Um, Please, uh, let's make a conversation in between the meetings as well as the time that we spend together. This has been very valuable to learn everybody, uh, have a name and a face or at least a, a little blank for those who aren't using video. Uh, we've got hard work to do, but I think that uh, this group is fully capable of uh, advising the mayor and helping her 
find a way forward. So thank you. Thank you. And I think then just uh, Sam Zimbabwe just wanted to share uh, one more thought as well before we all um, jump off. So so thank you to our co-chairs um, and, and over to Sam. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody. I know this has been a lot of organizational work just to get to know each other and get sort of who we are and what we what we share and, and what we're going to work on. There's so much to do on this program and I, I want to thank you all again for taking the time and the, the effort to do this. Um, we will work with every urgency to meet and exceed any timeline that we talk about here, but we also want to be very realistic. Uh, as we talk about the challenges that are ahead of us. Uh, so we know that there is just, a, there's, a, there's a lot of interest. It is urgently felt within SDOT uh, with, with Mayor Durkin and I, um, there, it, there's just a, so much work and we thank you again for the, the work that you're doing here. We want these, as the co-chairs talked about, we want these meetings to be useful and, uh, and, and make sure that, uh, they, they are engaging. I know this was a lot of just, just listening to each other, uh, but we really want them to be interactive and we'll work very hard to make sure we do that despite the challenges of the technology. So thank you again. Um, and I really look forward to all of our work together. All right, with that, we're adjourned. See you next week. Bye. Thank you.